From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, and welcome to another Cube Conversation. I'm Stu Miniman coming to you from our Boston area office. We've been in the cloud native ecosystem for many years. We know many open source projects are really helping to drive innovation, help companies modernize what they're doing. And one of the companies that leads one of those initiatives, happy to welcome to the program. Uh, we're gonna be talking to the co-founder and CTO of Styro, that is Tim Henricks. First time on theCUBE, of course, the company behind OPA. Tim, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Hi, Stu, thanks for having me. All right, so, so we've had uh, the, the CEO of Styro, Bill Mann, on the program uh, before. He's a many-time CUBE alum. It's your first time, and I always love when I get the founder on the program. Of course, the, the question is, you know, give us the why, Tim. It, there, there's no shortage of tools out there in the industry, uh, but it, as we've seen in, in the ecosystem, there's always companies, I, I wish something could happen, I wish we had something there. Often they build it from themselves and then, you know, create a project. So. Bring us back a little bit to that origin story and what, what, what you and the team, uh, what was the inspiration? Yeah, so when we, uh, the first thing to know is that really at Styro, what we're focused on is helping enterprises that are embracing cloud native technology sort of enforce and control the authorization policies um, across all their different cloud native software. So uh, I remember authorization is that problem of, you know, which people and which machines can perform which actions on software. And so the way this all got started was we were uh, at VMware before we founded Styra, and we were talking to a number of uh, uh, customers from finance and tech. And what they did is they had built one of these things. They had built a unified solution of policy to manage um, their, their authorization needs across many different pieces of software. And so at that point, we knew that the problem was very real because uh, people had to solve it themselves. And yeah. so when we... I, I'm, I'm sorry, Tim, just to, one thing to make sure I understand this. So you know, the policy management you talk about there, help me understand how that fits into, say, identity management, which is one of the top things we think about when, I, when I'm managing my IT, when I go to the cloud. Uh, it, it seems related, but, but, but different, yes? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So uh, identity management is really this problem of who are you? It's you know often solved from a user's point of view by providing a username and a, and a password or a thumbprint or a multi-factor authentication. Uh, that's an important problem that needs to be solved. Uh, that's authentication or identity. And it's really about proving who you are. Um, but authorization is the next step. It's about actions. Can you perform once you've convinced the machine who you are? Uh, and so really that's the piece that we focus on. All right, yeah, right. What, what, once we get people in, we, we need uh, it, it's usually you want to give them the least amount of, uh, of access possible. We understand that from a security standpoint. Uh, we need to do this. So you, you, you've said what the uh, kind of problem was and that this is there. So how come open source? I, I mean, we know often it's that the, there's many reasons why projects end up open source. So, so give us the journey here. Yeah, so uh, at Styro, we've really got two pieces of software. So one of which, as you say, is completely open source. It's, the, it's become the open policy agent project. Uh, we decided to, to open source it and then eventually donate it to the CNCF because its sort of mission in life is to make authorization decisions, make decisions about if an action that a user or a machine is trying to take is safe or not. And, um, and that project is really designed to be a decision maker across all the different kinds of software in the cloud native ecosystem. And so naturally, there's a need for a lot of expertise about a whole bunch of different areas, um, about a whole bunch of different pieces of software. And, and the best way to sort of leverage all of the world's knowledge about all those different pieces of software is to put that, that project out into the open. Um, and so for us, it was just uh, an easy, very easy thing to do. Every single line of OPA of code that goes into OPA has been, has been done in the open. Well, it, a, absolutely, it's, it's a project. I know I've seen the stickers, I've seen people talking about it in the breakouts at, at, at the KubeCon Cloud Native Con shows. Let, let, let's not leave everybody uh, you know, waiting for the news though, Tim. Uh, it had been an incubating project. I uh, believe you've got some news for us. Yep, absolutely. So OPA has now officially graduated. Um, uh, it's now moved from uh, incubation into the graduation um, uh, portion of the CNCF. And, and for us, it's really exciting because it really is a reflection of the maturity of the project, right? There are so many people using OPA and using it to solve all kinds of different use cases. We're even seeing vendors uh, pick it up and offer native integrations with, with their homegrown software. So it's really exciting to see uh, the progress that the project has made. And, and, and just for our audience that might not be familiar, what does this mean now that it's graduated as a maturity level? Is it production ready? What 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 are those criteria that, that, that allowed it to go from that incubating stage to the graduation? 
Yeah, so there are a bunch of criteria, but I think the biggest one really is, is really users in production, right? It has been proven at scale for, for many different uh, users uh, all over the world, right? Uh, CNCF just did a survey recently. There are a, a couple hundred uh, different organizations all across the world who are using Open in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we see it all the time in, in KubeCon and, and CloudNativeCon talks. Uh, you can hear all about all, all the folks who are using it. Yeah, so maybe it would help if you've got a customer example or use case that you can walk us through as to how exactly that fits. For sure, yeah. So the nice thing about OPA and, and more generally Styra is that you can apply it to all different kinds of use cases. So there are a couple of very popular ones, uh, using it for Kubernetes admission control or microservice authorization. Those are the two most popular right now. And they both work roughly the same way, but I'll, I'll give you a concrete example. Uh, for Kubernetes, anytime some end user is trying to spin up a new resource, whether it's a pod or an ingress or, or anything on the kube cluster, um, you can integrate OPA with that kube API server and allow OPA to make a decision. Is this new resource safe to deploy on the cluster or, or is it not? Microservice authorization works almost exactly the same way. Every time one of those microservices receives an API call, uh, it can ask OPA, is this API call safe for me to, off to, to execute or not? Uh, and so both of those are, are going to work in basically the same way. And that's true for all the other applications and use cases for, for OPA. Okay. And, and give us some of the stats, if you would. You know, how many people, how many, you know, companies and, and people contribute to it? What, what, what's the customer base look like? Yeah. I, I, so I think there are, there are a bunch of, uh, of, of interesting metrics. I think that well, the one that's, that's most interesting to me is the number of downloads uh, a week. Right now we're at uh, roughly a million downloads a week, which is super exciting. I remember those days when... Uh, uh, when you know we hit that one million mark total, and we were very excited, and so now we're at a point where it's every week we're we're hitting a million downloads. All kinds of contrib uh, contributors as well, and and I think you know another good metric there to think about are you know talks. I think we had nearly fifty talks, organic talks from end users on on OPA that that we you know ran across it last year. Well, it's what wonderful is the thing we love in that ecosystem. There is it, it's not just using it, contributing. Contributing to the to the code, sharing with with the community. Um, Tim, what what are the challenges in this ecosystem? You know, you if you go to the CNCF website and you look at the landscape, it's a little bit scary and taunting just because there's so many different pieces. What I want to understand from OPA is, you know, are there any dependencies there when, when you think about you know the the other services that it interacts with, or does it just you know kind of do its own thing uh, and, and enables uh, customers? Yeah, yeah. So OPA is uh, was designed to be a standalone project, right? It doesn't depend on really any other uh, any other CNCF or really any other project. It was designed to to make these policy or these authorization decisions, and but at the same time, it was also designed to make it very easy to integrate with a wide range of software systems. And so, you know, I think on the on the OPA website, we've got over twenty five different integrations that that we or the community have built around OPA to go ahead and give you and deliver on that vision of unified authorization. You mentioned that Styra has kind of two pieces. Help us understand, you know, what does graduating mean for, for customers in general and for, for Styra? Uh, help us understand a little bit more the, the, the business uh, that, that, that goes along with it. Yep. Yeah. So like I said, that first piece that we built, that first piece of software we built was the Open Policy Agent Project open source. The second piece of software that we built is a control plane for, for OPA. The idea architecturally behind OPA is that you don't have one copy of OPA running. Typically, you might have 10 or 100 or 1,000 copies of OPA running. And you do that for availability and performance sake for, for decision making. And so Styra's second piece of software is what we call the declarative authorization service. It is a control plane, a management plane, a single pane of glass that allows you to operationalize OPA at scale uh, for, for the enterprise. So it really is designed to give you that ability to control and manage, distribute policy, write policy, log all the policy decisions for all of those OPAs. Um, and so that's really where uh, we're, that's the second piece of software that we're putting a lot of effort and energy into. All right. Uh, now, now that the graduation is, is there, what does this mean? You know, give us a little bit of the the, the roadmap. You're the CTO. We we know there's always you know feedbacks and, uh, and and other updates coming. So, what should we be expecting to be seeing going forward? Yeah. So there are a couple of things I'll mention here. One of which is that uh, with OPA, we did a survey recently, just trying to get, you know trying to get a sense as to what you know what the community needs and how they're using OPA. And so one of the things we found was that the fastest growing use case for OPA. Uh, it looks to be application authorization, right? So if you're building a custom application, maybe it's a banking application, that application needs to decide every time a user performs an action, is this authorized or not? So if I'm trying to withdraw money from an account, is it safe or not? 
Um, and so that's the, gr the fastest growing uh, uh, use case for OPA that we saw in that. And so what I expect to see is more and more people talking about using OPA for that, uh, for that application level authorization. Um, on, the, on the Styrus side, I think what, what we're looking forward to is just continuing to chat with the community and understand what they need around, around operationalizing OPA and, and making that control plane, that management plane, do all the things that, that enterprises need to, to operationalize um, OPA at scale. Tim, you've, you've reached the graduation, which is a phenomenal uh, milestone in the project there. There's, there's so many other projects out there. I wonder what advice you would give to other people starting a business, starting a project, engaging with the open source community. Uh, what have you learned along the way? Uh, any lessons learned and what feedback would you give others? Absolutely. Yeah. So if I'm talking to somebody else who's interested in you know, starting an open source project, I'll give them a little bit of advice. So the first of which is that certainly the code matters a lot. It's, code's got to be technically sound. It's got to be solving real problems. Everybody understands that. I think what a lot of people understand less of is that when you start a project, you need to put a lot of energy into growing that, uh, that community, that communication. You need to focus a lot. You need to reach out to end users and actively engage with them, help them understand what the project's good for, help them be successful with it. Um, and so I think that the, that that piece is what a, a lot of people don't really understand. And it's something that I think we that, that if more people did, we'd see a lot more successful open source projects. All right, Tim, I'll let you have the final word and any, any final things you want to you know, feedback to the community or, uh, you know, potential uh, customers for Styra. Sure. Um, yeah. So I, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of our community members, all the users who have worked with us, all of the all the vendors who are who are take, who are doing integrations with OPA. We love to see it. Would love to see more of it. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, I got to say I'm super excited to to be working both with OPA and in our commercial uh, declarative authorization service to really deliver on that vision of unified authorization and, and deliver that to the to the to the world at large. Tim, congratulations to you and the, the whole OPA team and Styra. Uh, definitely looking forward to uh, seeing you at the next uh, gathering of the community and uh, we'll, we'll hear more updates in the future. Thanks so much for having me, Stu. This is great. All right, and be sure to check out thecube.net for all the back catalog uh, of interviews that we've done, in, including with uh, the, the CEO of Styra, uh, as well as upcoming events that we will be at, including, of course, KubeCon Cloud Native Con North America happening later this year virtually. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.